So why are we sharing these things? Why am I sharing these things? Like I've mentioned from the beginning, part of what I think is my responsibility is to help you to grow intellectually. And how do we grow intellectually? Well, we, we need to get rid of things that are in our way of our goals. And one of them is helps us is to know about procrastination, you know? And so that's why I shared this with you. He does it in a comic fashion, but there's so many truths to, to what he said. And he shares a very funny uh, anecdote as to even him recording his, uh, his TED talk. Very, very funny, but very informative. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about rhetoric and discussing its importance. I didn't have a lot of students chime in on this. Obviously, I just had joy right there. But again, it says share your thoughts and respond to three other students' thoughts on the importance of understanding this term. And piecing together a definition of rhetoric on page 36, the chapter offers a bare bones definition of rhetoric rhetoric in this in this claim it's a way of thinking about how we talk that takes into consideration the entire situation in which that talk takes place so we what i want you to do is have a very deep understanding or help you to have a deep understanding of rhetoric so that when you're writing your paper you can apply the principle to to your writing down here i've asked you to read the next chapter, which is Argument Beyond Pro and Con, page 153 to 189. And the reason that this is important is because it kind of lays a foundation, so really supplies an argument for writing an argument and for providing the pros and cons. What's important in a argumentative essay is that it's not just it's just not, not five or six paragraphs, but it has a very important paragraph called the counter argument. And it basically says that when you argue something, you also have to show the opposition's argument and their position, and then use that as a basis to strengthen your argument. You could say, yes, although the smartphone, for example, has lots of incredible resources that everyone uses in everyday life, being stuck on it and having it get in the way of you being productive is a problem and here's why. That's just, I'm just thinking off the top of the head. But remember the counter argument is a very important part of your argumentative essay. And I'm gonna share a PowerPoint that starts to go through some of these things. When it comes to the, okay, I think I have one letter so far, writing a letter to your phone, which is, you'll see how you can say, well, what am I gonna say? I'll write a little bit. And then once you start writing, you end up committing a lot of content to writing to your phone. Some people have a name for their phone. Some students are more attached than others. And it is, it actually is a part of who we are in a way. Sometimes it defines us. I've had students say they can't do anything without their phone. Uh, and so we have to think about that type of dependence on your phone. But it is an incredible, incredible uh, invention. That's for sure. So and here you're going to write uh, a reflection on the pros and cons of argument. Um, when it comes to the smartphone article, let's see if I can, I'm going to show the, the student view. And what I, I should have mentioned was, let's see if it comes up. Okay. So when you're looking for a smartphone article, like we mentioned on Monday, you want to try to find something uh, in, um, uh, in Google but not, not regular Google, you wanna to go to uh, Google Scholar. But when you're, when you're writing your 
uh, when you're researching your article and you're writing about it here, right? You can also attach it and, and you can attach it here where it says, uh, see this little, it looks like a little, where it says documents and you click here and wherever your article is, hopefully you've uploaded it or for your own future use, then you hit upload file, then you hit, hit submit down here so that I can see the article also. And then maybe it's even on an article that you wouldn't mind sharing uh, with the rest of the student body. The other thing that I wanted to share with you before we go into the, uh, the PowerPoint on the argumentative essay is that over here on, in fact, I'll go back to student view. Over here on the left, you have something called files. And in files, there is a folder on the argumentative essay. And if you click on that, it has lots of uh, different resources that you can use when you're writing your essay. For example, it has a checklist. It has the rubric that lets you know, kind of like it lets you know definitely what the parameters are for writing your argumentative essay. It gives you a graphic organizer that you can download and use that. I'll just show you what it looks like. Uh, where you can put, you know, one, two, and three reasons of why you're arguing your particular point of view, and then you can write in down here, use it again as a, like a notebook to write uh, concrete examples, and then you have a uh, place for you to explain them. Uh, people, students ask me, how many pages is 1,500 words? Can anybody tell me that? What they think it is double spaced. Three, maybe. Okay, three. Anybody else? Uh, it's six pages if it's double spaced. Yes, it's six pages if it's double spaced. And so I have that here so that there's uh, so there's no misunderstanding. Uh, some students think, oh, it, you know, if it looks long, it is long, but it's actually six pages double spaced and everything should be double spaced for this class. I've also included a argumentative essay model. This was uh, a pretty good one. It's not a super good one, but it is a good one uh, so that you could see an, a model of what an argumentative essay looks like, although I did alter it a little bit, change the name to protect the innocent, and I put the paragraphs, I numbered them. And so, you know that, uh, I mean, well, we'll go over it right now, but usually, you know, you have an opening paragraph, then you have like three or four body paragraphs. Each body paragraph will have a, a topic sentence, and then everything else in the paragraph will support your topic or your contention or your claim. This one here, somewhere in here, there is, here it is. He's included his uh, counter argument or, or here in, uh, in paragraph six. So you can kind of see and get a, an idea of what a counter argument looks like, a counter argument paragraph. And then he's got uh, uh, his conclusion. So why am I doing this? Because I want you to not be in the dark as to what an argumentative essay is all about. Different, it's a different essay. You don't write it in the first or second person, you write it in the third person. You write it like from an outside point of view looking in. And so that means, well, what does that mean, Professor, if you can't write it in first and second person? That means that you're not saying I, we, you're, you're using pronouns like they and them. This here is the, the prompt although it just has the wrong year on it, but I didn't change it here, but I will. And uh, this, is, this is located in another part of the, of, the, um, of the module. And then here's how to cite works. And I will have a presentation on how you cite works. 
This particular essay will be written in MLA format, institutional educational like format. But the rest of it, you're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of creative leeway. Okay, so let's go back here. Any questions? I know I'm talking a lot. No. Okay. Let's see. Who's... Okay. Well, we have five students. I think a couple took off. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to go over. The argumentative essay. Has anybody here written an argumentative essay ever? No. No. Don't forget here, what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the, the first paragraph of the essay. That's going to be the first assignment for the essay. Like I said on Monday, to make sure that we are going in the right direction. Again, here are resources. All of these books here, I've read them all and they are all really good. And then here's four articles that are very, very, very good. All right, going back to the module. It's loading. I forgot I have to be careful when I'm recording and recording music because YouTube will pick it up and um, so obviously you have to investigate the topic, you have to collect, generate, evaluate evidence, and you have to establish a position on the topic in a concise manner. This is a little uh, quirky example. Bob says that was a lay movie. Susie says, why? Bob says the special effects were bad. The monsters were obviously fake. Susie's counterclaim is I thought the movie was good because the acting was believable. Bob's bad response, you're an idiot. And Bob's good response, yes, the acting was good, but the horrible special effects were too distracting and caused some awkward moments. The difference between a persuasive, persuasive and an argumentative essay is that in a persuasive essay, The action or fact of persuading someone or of being persuaded to do so or to believe something, it's almost, uh, you don't have to really prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. But in an argument, the process of establishing a claim and then proving it with the use of logical reason, examples, and research. And the logical re reasoning, you'll learn that from the book with, uh, with uh, logos, pathos, and ethos examples. An argumentative essay makes claims based on factual evidence. In other words, if you say that, for example, cell phone use since 2012 has worked against young teens because it has raised the, low, the levels of stress and anxiety. Well, that's quite a claim. What you have to do is say, according to psychological psychology today and this study, so you make a claim, then you have to support it with specific evidence. You state a claim and you support it with reasons and evidence. Arguing your side makes you the proponent. The counterclaim, like I mentioned earlier, is an argument that stands in opposition to your argument. The counter argument is your opponent, the other side's argument uh, that tries to explain why you are wrong. And then you have to refute that by saying, although, like I said, the smartphone has lots and lots of resources that we use on a daily basis, the overuse of it causes these type of problems, right? And there's lots of stuff that you will find for you know when students or anybody abuses the, the cell phone and here i actually have what i like about this is this particular presentation that it talks about logos ethos and pathos presentation goes on 
to tell you about organizing your thoughts in your argumentative writing. You guide the audience through the reasoning process. You offer a clear explanation of each argued point, and you demonstrate the credibility of the writer. Now, what's really important here is that you understand that each paragraph is about one idea. And so when you write your thesis statement, and you're going to mention probably three things that are that you're going to argue for. Uh, maybe you're going to say that teens who abuse the smartphone become victims of A, B, and C. And then A, B, and C will be a body paragraph. They'll start off with a topic sentence. You build your main points. You counter the opposition, then you conclude every, every paragraph. You introduce the topic, then you generate reader interest in the argument, and you can grab their attention by, here we're not gonna use images, but maybe a particular language. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because it's pretty lengthy, but this tells you what is the introduction in your power, in your argumentative essay, methods for constructing your introduction, you always want to start off with a hot, attention-grabbing opening sentence, right? Shocking statistics, a quotation, a question, a personal anecdote, an example, real or hypothetical. And then from there, you want to introduce information. I don't know where these things are. It talks about what is a thesis statement. It's the most important sentence in your paper. It tells you more or less where a thesis statement should be located. It could be located anywhere in your opening paragraph. And the thesis statement is really the roadmap to your essay. And so let me get my chalkboard. Professor, you're going to have to get faster at this stuff. Then. <laughs> so your argumentative essay, you're going to have the introduction. Right? And your introduction is going to have your hook. Your very first sentence is a hook, right? You want to grab the reader's attention. Okay, that's your introductory. Then in here, after you grab their attention, then you're going to then you're going to include some details, general details. Then you're going to graduate from there to specific details. You may say something very general, like, you know, since um, since the year 2012, that was actually the 2012 was the turning point in cell in the smartphone. That's when over 50% of the population owned or bought a cell phone. And it was at that point that the statistics started to really come into view in regards to actually teen suicide, depression, um, anxiety, and a bunch of other things that come from the abuse of the, of the phone. So you start off your very first paragraph with a hook. You want to grab the reader's attention with some type of statistic or analysis or even a personal anecdote. Uh, I've had students, believe it or not, <laughs> lose boyfriends, lose best friends. Uh, it's affected marriages. Uh, there's been a lot of a lot of problems that have come from the abuse or the overuse of the cell phone. Start with your book. You start with general details, then you get specific details. 
somewhere in here, you're going to introduce your thesis or your roadmap. You're basically going to be telling us where you're going, what your position is, and what you're going to be arguing for. And you, when you argue a specific position, you want to be strong about it, and you want to use strong words. You don't. You, there's nothing like "I believe what," "I believe" is first person, right? We're going to stay away from first and second person. And I will put up a a little analysis of first, second, and third person so that you understand why we're writing in third person. You introduced your thesis roadmap, right? That will tell us where you're going. Then the very last sentence is you introduce your first body paragraph. In your thesis statement, you're going to tell us more or less your three points that you're going to argue. And as you do your research, you're going to find that there's way more than three points, but you're going to argue the three points that matter to you, that stick to you, that blow your mind that want you to do more research on because it's like hard to fathom some of the things that you're going to find. So you got your introductory paragraph, you start off with your hook, general details, specific details, you introduce your thesis or your roadmap, and then you introduce your first body paragraph with usually the last sentence, the last sentence of your introductory paragraph. I'm looking for my eraser, which is on the other side. All right, so hopefully you got that down. Besides that, it's gonna be recorded here for you to access. All right, so then you've got your introduction and you've got three body paragraphs, most likely. Right? Each pair, each body paragraph is, is going to have an opening sentence, right? It's going to have your topic sentence. And in the topic sentence, you're going to talk about your first claim. You may say something like, uh, let's see. I don't I have to be careful here is because I've had students write an essay on everything that I wrote on the board. But let's say your first claim is that it damages, it causes, and it does, a sleeping disorder. Okay, so you're going to talk about in your first topic sentence, your first claim is a sleeping disorder. Now, the rest of your essay, uh, the rest of your paragraph is going to be supporting the claim. And then that's through studies. <laughs> Boy. That's nice and crooked, right? Through studies, uh, through peer-reviewed articles. What do we mean by peer-reviewed article? We mean like if you're using a article from Psychology Today or some type of medical magazine or book, most likely those articles were reviewed by other professionals in the um, in the, on the subject. 
Okay. So you're going to the, you know, each body paragraph is, is going to do, is going to perform the same function. Topic sentence, first claim. Okay, supporting that claim. And why? Why? Why is it important? It's just like if you're going to be arguing with with someone, or let's say you're arguing with your with your children as to why it's important for them to do their homework, why it's important for them to get an education, right? You're going to give them statistics. You're going to you're going to share maybe uh, anecdotes of you know people in the family who who maybe uh, aren't taking care of business or you know I something along those lines you want to whatever you say you have to support it and the thing about writing which is different from speaking is that if you say something in writing you have to support it with something with some type of study or some type of article or something you can't just say well um the smartphone abuse affects students' anxiety and move on. Okay, you have to say, okay, well, if it affects their anxiety, according to a study, this is why. And you're gonna find so much information because there are studies that have been done all over the world, especially in Korea, uh, where they have a major problem. I'll have to share with you in China, they actually have a boot camp where some uh, parents, they, uh, they kidnap their kids or they get their kids or they tr trick their kids into going to a boot camp. And in the boot camp, they take away all technology uh, because they've gotten to the point where some of them, gaming is big there, where some of them go to these, um, uh, I guess they're kind of like a club for where they have video screens and computers and everything, and they go in and they play for hours and hours and hours. Some have been reputed to wear a diaper because they didn't want to stop. And they take little snacks and, you know, they just like, they're too addicted. So the parents have to take them to a boot camp where it helps them to detox. Anyway, that's extreme, extreme, extreme. All right. So each body paragraph has all of these elements. You've got three of them. Then you've got your... Your counter arguments, you have your introduction, three body paragraphs. This is my symbol for paragraph, right? Then you have your, your counter argument. Which as the PowerPoint points out, is that you're showing the opposition. You're gonna talk about all the benefits of a smartphone or the benefits of, uh, I don't know, social, I don't know if there's any benefits of social media. I guess there are. Okay. The counter argument is the opposition's point of view. You know what this makes me feel like? This makes me feel like I'm teaching in the classroom because this is what I would be doing. Be writing on the board. I like to write on the board. All right. Introduction, three body paragraphs. You got a counter argument. So you already have one, two, three, four, you have five paragraphs already, right? And of course, the final one is your conclusion. And I'm going to have one class on the conclusion. Why? Because I found that students will. They just won't put their all into the conclusion. And the conclusion wraps the whole thing up. In the conclusion, you have to mention everything. And you have to, you have to come to, like I said, obviously, a conclusion. You have to come to a conclusion and then possibly recommendations. Recommendations.
So I bought six six paragraphs. You end up right around fifteen hundred words, right? It's going to be an MLA format, which is just a very formal way of writing uh, that we'll go over. And then you have to definitely at the end you have to include your citations. Where did you get your information that you're writing about, right? And believe me, you may have written at the end of this thing the best paper you've ever written. I hope. I hope that you will say, you know, you, that you become very proud of it because why? You would have done it right. You would have argued a certain point of view. You would have been, you would have uh, included reasons why. You, then you would have shown the opposition's position, right? And then you would have made it, and then you would have drawn a, a strong conclusion, which will include almost everything, a summary of everything you've written about. You would say something like, in conclusion, I really believe that that's where in the conclusion, you can go to first person. You're writing sideways. How are we going to see that movie? Okay. You're writing in first person here. This is where you can share your opinion. And, you know, in conclusion, we've seen that the abuse of the cell phone by teens has produced these symptoms. We've shown through studies and through surveys and through articles that these problems are real, right? And then you'll list them. And then at the end, you might say, I recommend, or I think that we should do this, right? I think we should take these steps. I think we should take these steps. And so I've seen that I... It's already 11 o'clock and I've gone over a little bit, but hopefully we got something out of today's class. And that is the direction we're going in with the argumentative essay, the content is, you know, smartphone addiction. Uh, and I think that's it. Dang, you talk a lot. I don't mean to talk a lot, but I think it's important that we get down to basics. Okay. Any questions before we sign off today? Well, let me hold on. Let me take, let me make sure I got everybody's name here. Mary's here. I got that. Joy. Genesis. Great name. Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Amate. Let's see. Is that it? Yes. Yeah, I think there was somebody else here earlier, but now, do you guys, is this cool? Do you guys like this? I should shut that thing off. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Thank you. I got a one thumbs up. All right, cool. Um, I don't mind doing, I like doing it. I think that as opposed to the other, uh,